Hi guys, Dave in Texas here, and what you're looking at is my old Yamaha. It's the, uh, oh gosh, it's the FG160, made about 50 years ago. Great tone to it. However, uh, I've got some really worn out frets on this thing. Let me show this to you and move the camera around a little bit. And it's just playing very badly now. You can see I took some of the ridges out. Uh, I originally showed you that scraping those. I'm going to scrape those again one more time. But I'm also going to put in some new frets today. Okie dokie. Now, the trick to this is, of course, getting them out, measuring them, make sure you're putting the right frets back. And we're looking at this type of fret to put in there. Got a couple of sets of these. All right. These are not pre cut, you have to cut them. And, uh,. Since I'm doing this again, doing fret jobs on these guitars, being asked to do them, I went out and bought the nicest uh, set of fret pullers you can get. These are from Philadelphia Luthiers, and they're not cheap, guys. This is a $40 set of fret pullers only. Alrighty, and these, you know, I've tested them, they do a wonderful job. Right? And the uh, fret pullers I got from China are a total piece of shit. <laughs> You can see the head's totally rounded, which it should be just real flat. And you also see that the uh, jaws don't meet. See, see that white or the black gap in there in between the, the jaws? Well, that's a problem. These have become my new fret cutters. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, get a file and change those uh, uh, edges up a little bit to help me cut frets, but uh, I can't pull frets with these as they are. I'd have to actually put these on a grinding wheel and grind them flat on their head like this is these are see how nice and flat that is okay so we're going to get in there and start pulling these frets out and what I do I use a uh, um, soldering iron I heat it up to about medium heat on mine and I'll lay that across the uh, fret I'm pulling I'll start from the bottom up on these and uh, go on up. Now I heat the uh, frets up. It's not on right now, but I heat the frets up once I have a uh, guide over them, right? To loosen up any old glue that's in there. I also have some fret uh, devices that also do the same thing. They protect the uh, fretboard itself. Let me show you those. That one. And I can use this as well. Main thing is get something beside that to keep the heat off the board itself. Now some people will actually take this uh, set of jaws, right, and get in between there with the soldering iron to uh, uh, lay the tool on that way. And I don't like doing that, it's just too much. Uh, what I'll do is leave that on there, heat it up, and uh, move it around as necessary. Now of course the thing to do with this type of uh, a puller is start from one edge, right, and just work yourself across like this gently pulling these things up to not take any wood chips that you can but even if, though this thing's been oiled uh, once a day for the last week it's still looking dry to me I'm going to oil it one more time uh, I've oiled it for a week every day and it's still you know there's a potential to, to pull out chips of wood just, that's just what happens and you try to save those chips on your mat uh, as you uh, collect them uh, I just put them in a little cup uh, if they're big enough to put back in as well as little pieces and splinters I'll grind those up and make them into a paste and put back into the chip holes if that makes any sense to y'all and Work on it that way, but anyway What we're gonna do is start pulling these and uh, go from there. So hang in there guys While I rearrange this camera so you can see what I'm doing. I Think you can see it that way guys what I'm going to be doing uh, Anyway, we'll go ahead and shoot this uh, and see what we can come up with video wise. But I'm going to pull that uh, last fret first and go from there. So hang in there, guys. I'm going to have to heat up this iron uh, first of all. Like I said, loosen up any glue. Uh, it also expands the fret, which is not good, but uh, you know, you also uh, heat it up and let it cool off again so it breaks contact with the glue. I've done it that way as well. If there's something like the one here that's stubborn, if it's really stubborn, I'll keep the heat on as I'm pulling. But 
I haven't had one of those in years. Okie dokie. So, hang in there while I get this thing done, and uh, we'll get to running here soon. Well, just as soon as I start to pull something, work with it, of course the camera goes off. The battery, I've got to get a new battery for this camera. It doesn't last 20 minutes anymore. And it should last up to an hour according to the information. But it's an old battery, so I can't expect much. Anyway, what I had done, guys, I'd taken my uh, soldering iron out. And I had uh, gone ahead and uh, got underneath that first fret like I'm supposed to. And got it moving. And what you do is you go down the row, piece by piece, pulling up gently, so that you don't cause any you know issues with it. But just take your fret, your soldering iron when it's really hot. You'll lay it across there like I'm doing. You can see this, and that's going to break up any glue that's underneath there. And then if you're concerned about getting it too hot or actually getting your hands burnt, just don't pull on it. <laughs> but it doesn't take much, it doesn't take long. You have a nice little amount of time. Of course, that's what takes, you know, that's what costs these things so much to do these jobs, these fret jobs, is the fact that, uh, you know, it takes just so much time. Now, like what I told you, I got underneath the fret and I'm pulling that up just gently as can be. And I'm working my way down the fret. Trying not to pull any chips out with it. And as you can see, it's going to leave a rough edge to it like, you know, that's expected. But so far, no chips, and that's what you want. But you don't want to force this. You want to let the tools do the job and just gently lift that up. And look at that. That is a pretty pristine removal of that fret, right? Now, if you have any questions about the frets themselves, now is the time as you can go and do your measurements with them to make sure you're putting back the right, you know, uh, size fret. Follow me? And to look at this, I don't see hardly any glue in this at all. So that may not even be an issue anymore. Let me check that real quick. I've got a gauge in here I use. To uh, check the depth on these things, as well as the uh, radius. All right, so we're looking at a 12, really. Yeah, there is some glue in there, guys. Just a little bit of glue. That's a pretty tight fit. Can you see it? Yeah. No, you can't. See, my hands are in the way again. Darn it! Even with the camera over there. What I'm doing is uh, measuring the depth of this and what I'll do <laughs> what I'll do later on when I get this out of the damn guitar body good thing it's a big hole anyway what I'll do uh, later on when I'm ready to uh, go for this thing uh, to uh, put new frets in it what I'll do is uh, take a nice little tool I've got and I'll scrape any residual glue that's left in there out, if that makes any sense. Also, today, I got a big shipment in, and uh, I'm going to try these for the very first time. They're called uh, nut wires, right? And what they are, they're stainless steel uh, files used to open it up and to uh, uh, clean out uh, your nut. And there's widen it out, the lower it, what you want to do with it. Not for cutting a bone nut, not for the actual cutting that's done with some very very sharp saws, but this is a these little things are to aid in the uh, the final up on that job. Anyhow, uh, next one we'll heat that up and uh, show you that from scratch this time, <laughs> not uh, start in the middle of the job. So this is actual time, guys. I'm gonna put this uh, soldering iron on here and use it on medium high heat right that's a little less than 400 watts and just pull it across here now I've got another tip to this I was trying to find it it's a flat tip 
It'd be much better, but uh, I can't seem to put my hands on it right now. A broad tip would work much better. A flat would work perfectly on this. But uh, like I said, it's heating up the entire fret, and I'm protecting the fretboard with this little shield. I also use this to uh, clean frets up with, uh, rather than tape. I'll use this in uh, steel wool, the right size ones. This is the larger one. There's one that fits this better. But uh, I'll use this to uh, clean them up with steel wool, polish them up once I'm finished. I don't like using sandpaper on polishing, even a very, you know, mild grit. Uh, I've seen where it puts little tiny gouges, you know, with a magnifying glass where it actually is just too much when you have a block. You take it across there even with fine uh, sandpaper. You can always leave a little, uh, you know, little scratches, little indentions, and that's what we don't want. Now, to get under there, see, I just gently lifted that up. That's all I did. I just kind of gently rocked it up, and I'll travel on down the fret line, just gently lifting up little piece by little piece. I'm not really totally under the fret. I'm kind of beside it, and that's actually putting down pressure on the uh, uh, board itself so that I'm not pulling up any chips and yeah the sooner or later the chip will show up it does happen and they need to be fixed but on a you know 50 year old guitar you're going to, have to do some repairs to them right again that's what takes you so long to do these jobs and there's another one with no chips Isn't that nice and I'll repeat that repeat that repeat that for all the remaining uh, frets on the board. Uh, I'm just going ahead and do this uh, without talking. Just keep going down the line. I really appreciate that. And I'll edit out just whatever. But sooner or later, a chip will show up and I'll show you what we do. That's not only a chip, that's just an old scratch. Anyway, I'll show you what I do uh, with the chip parts if a large one shows up. Does that make sense? So, I'm going to keep my mouth shut, which I'm sure you appreciate, and just do the job. And yes, that little guard gets hot. That you don't want to hear too much. Where clicks, you want to get back far enough where you're just getting under it just gently enough to pull it up like that. That started chip right there, a little tiny piece, but it didn't. It'll stay down. I scratch up the board or you just file it down, they'll, they'll just disappear. But uh, there you are, another extraction done. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to be bored to tears on this. I wish I had some giddy up go uh, video uh, speed thing for you. That may turn into a chip. I have to check. No, I guess not. Anyway, if a chip shows up, I'll save that on the video so let you see what we do. In the meantime, let's keep going and going and going.
And the thing to do is to finish these off and not pull. Just go to the very edge like that. That way there's no chance of chipping. See that? Ah, shit. That's a warm fret, dude. <laughs> I'm never gonna pull these up with my fingers. Anyway, this little bit of uh, triangle top shape uh, indentions in the fret uh, board, that's to be expected. That's just the uh, tangs of these things, the little edges coming out. And that's what keeps them in there. Also, I mean, to show you, I've got some uh, pre cut stainless steels, and I've got these really quality ones from Taylor. And these are not pre-cut. I cut every bit of these uh, to fit the uh, Taylor guitar that we're working on. Those nicey, nicey. Those are twenty-five bucks a set. Plus you get, you know, twenty-five pieces in there, which ain't bad. You get your money's worth, especially with a, you know, quality uh, nickel alloy fret. Okay, and. Uh, I was talking to some people and I was going to put some stainless steels on this one, on this guitar, right? And they said, well, <laughs> you want to change up your entire tone to it and make it sound tinny, go ahead. So that nice deep uh, tone that's developed over 50 years, that wood aging. It's going to sound like a brand new set of strings when you're playing notes all the time. And ding, 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 ding. No way, no way. I'm going to leave it like it is. I'm not going to take that kind of chance and have a tin like sound coming out of my guitar because I want to put on some longer lasting frets. And I mean, you know, longer lasting is really subjective. This is a 50 year old guitar that's been recrowned twice that I did it once. And uh, that was 10 years ago when I recrowned this. And now it's just time to get rid of these old ones. And uh, the ones down here on the bottom are just barely used, but you know they have been used, and you can see uh, where I've recrowned them. Uh, you also can see where they've gone flat in spots on the bottom. So it's time to just get rid of them and start over with a new, fresh set of really nice, tailor-made frets. Of course, those other brand I bought, these. These uh, so dial, they're not cheap either. I'm like uh, 18 bucks a set for those, but these are pre cut to match up your guitar's uh, fretboard. So you actually put the small ones in where they go and the long ones in where they go. Makes it a little bit easier for you. Of course, you still have to do some cutting no matter what. You know, one end's going to have to be trimmed, you know. And I'm the type that's like a cut straight across. I don't want to try to trim that bottom tang off and just have the uh, fret itself. I'd rather have it contacting as much wood in there as I can. Okay. And just cut off that top fret bar itself. That's gonna be hot. Yeah, that's hot. They do get hot. Again, just, just gently, the well, last came out real nice. Just gently walk this thing. There's no rush. You don't need to grab lots of territory. Just inch by tiny inch that you're pulling these things out by. Until you get to the end, and the longer the heat, the better the pull. Now that now that's not even a tiny piece. That's just a nibbin. I wouldn't call that. That's not a piece. That's nothing. Sooner or later, there's going to something. There's going to piece going to come out. I know it. It just happens on every guitar I've ever done. That's you get a tiny, tiny little. You know, I guess the only thing that is really frustrating in my shop is that I've got a shortage of electrical plugs, and I've got like eight plugs. I've got fully plugged. <laughs> oh, brother! It just gets crazy out here in this shop. But uh, I've got to have something on, some music, something, guys. It's just, uh, yeah, it never fails. I got somebody on the line that uh, doesn't want to follow instructions. And I try to make things as simple as I can, such as, you know, just put some uh, linseed oil on it. That will help. 
Anyway, later, once I finish this fret job, what I'm going to do, while that iron heats back up again, I have to move some wires around to reconnect the camera. What I'm going to do later on is what we do, shave uh, the fretboard. By shave, you take a uh, safety razor, what they're called. You take a safety razor to shave a guitar fret. You take a safety razor, right? And you gently go from top to bottom, pulling it gently. You take up little tiny, minuscule pieces of the fretboard and level it out. Now, holes that are deep inside the fretboard, you can't get rid of. I've got two or three holes on this guitar that they'll never be gone. And uh, some people say, well, you know, heat it up with some water and some cloth and blah, blah, blah. Well, <laughs> that works until the wood, that works until the wood splits on you. I've had that happen on old guitars. So it's best just to shave them down and keep them shaved down so they don't become an issue later on. Because uh, in the meantime, if uh, you stop and think about it, uh, the sooner you do it, the better, because it's going to get deeper as it goes. And then you're up shit creek. But at least you can adjust your, car, your guitar accordingly once you have a level fret and no holes in it compared to some strings. And it's always the, uh, you know, the GBE that uh, goes first, those ones that get uh, the holes in there first. And uh, on a D chord, they really just eat them up. And that's what you got to deal with when you work on these guitars. You have to tell people, well, you're going to shave that fretboard. Oh, no, no. I saw where you can actually make it new again by putting uh, heat to it with a uh, hot water and a rag. <laughs> yeah, right. The only problem is the area around that little indention, if it's too deep, won't expand or contract the same way that the rest of the wood does, and therefore a crack could occur. And there are even up more problems trying to fix a crack in a fretboard. That will grab a string. So what's the least of all evils? Shave the fretboard. Now I showed y'all before in a video, I shaved this fretboard that had some really deep ruts in it that I just let it go forever. I should have not let it go that long, but I did. And it ended up having to work twice as hard to get it to come back again. Wow, there's heat coming off there. I put too much heat on this one. Yeah, it came right up there. <laughs> That was no problem getting this one to come up. You gotta remember, take it slow, just cause it's loose. Take it slow, take it slow. Little tiny steps, baby steps on these. Baby steps means no huge chunks of wood coming out with the fret. And I went ahead and bought a new fret press. Yay! I think I showed you that before in my tool video. Another one out, another tooth pull. And uh, we'll be using that instead of a hammer and uh, bags of uh, lead shot. Which, if you ever hunt, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Those are those little tiny pellets you buy in these 10 pound bags like this, right? And uh, you refill shotgun shells with those when you have a high brass shell you're using. It's reloadable. Only problem is you can't use those lead shots anymore, those lead pellets. Those are illegal in most areas, maybe the entire United States. You have to use a shot called a bismuth shot that won't uh, lead pollute the area where these uh, ducks and geese eat, which is coming up to duck and goose season, which I used to love to go. Okay, well, that is a chip right there. You see that? That's a chip. It's just tiny minuscule, but what I'll do is get some ground up uh, rosewood and it's put in there. And what happened was, it's right where an old indention was. You see it? Around the edge of that. And that's what happens when they chip. Because the rest of it's just, you know, fine. Those are just uh, those uh, little triangle shapes. Those are normal when you take frets out. And that's just what happens. Anyway, hang in there, guys. We'll work on the rest of it here soon. Okay, so we're taking this little rat file here right for its flat side and taking the cross getting that area flat again 
By flat, I mean I'm thawing the radius, guys. I'm not flattening this thing out completely. And it, it'll be hidden by the fret itself, uh, you know, this lighter color to it. But uh, I'm not feeling any more height to it. It's got to be flat. And what I'm also going to try to do, I've got a file that I'll get down here inside this and uh, file this, uh, open this a little bit, just a tiny bit, opening it up. There's still glue in there because I can't see it, obviously, even, even with magnifying and, and high intensity lights. You can't tell if you're down on, on the wood itself other than trying to scrape it out and see if anything else comes out on it. But I do have a depth gauge in here in my test tools that I can use to test it to see if I actually am flat on wood or not and how far I have to go, basically. If I can find it. <laughs> Hold on, guys. It's in here with my test tools and i got quite a few of them in here right now. There it is. Alright, now obviously this little test tool is pretty simple. I go by the radius, this is 1014, and I'll check it, see if I'm down to depth, and obviously I'm not. I'm not there yet guys, so there's a lot of scratching and scraping to go on, as well as cleaning out the inside of this to accept my fret more readily, the tangs on it. And unfortunately on this one, you can see there's a little tiny, tiny chip that came off that. And on a restoration type job, uh, I go in there and grind up some uh, uh, old, old old rosewood I've got laying around, a block of it, and fill this where the frets have been accepted and glue too. So I've got to get that old glue out of there the best I can. And that little death gauge, once it's down, Keep testing it back and forth. Once it's down, I don't know if I'm in there or not yet. Ah, bingo. Okay, so that actually is now touching the bottom of the uh, board without any glue in its way. But I still have a tiny bit of uh, height to it that I'll have to remove with this file I'm using. Now I use a number of different files with but I use a number of different types of files, and I'll, I'll try to show you. Well, I also use a nice uh, flat X-Acto knife like this uh, to help get in there and work those flat again. Get that uh, area flat on the side so it doesn't click, click, click when I run a file past it. Let me show you some of these files I use. Uh, these are both triangle, different sizes that I'll use again into the hole itself and just very gently work it with one of the edges like this to make sure I'm flat and that the hole is proper. You follow me? And the very edge of this is what I'm using. Not not real deep. I'm not going as deep as the hole itself. Just the very top of it I'm working. And I've got to always remember there's a radius to this so there's no issues and now I'm getting flat again okay now it's going flat now I also have a couple other files I use but uh, this is the basic ones I use to get all this work done on the fretboard it's also why it takes so long to do these but then again that's why it takes so long and why people charge so much to do these fret jobs it is time consuming and it's very delicate little work and you could screw things up very badly unless you know what the heck you're doing so hang in there guys while I set this fret up and uh, show you a press in later on. Alright, if you'll look, well, again what I'm telling you I'm doing, I'm going through and leveling out these uh, top layers, top areas of these frets. Taking off a little bit by a little bit because I don't want to get below the line. I want to get level, alright, with this and it's just taking time. There's a lot of discoloration on this wood. And the only really problem one I have is one with a big indention in it. It's this one here. You see that uh, big uh, oh, finger screw up. Like this here. Sorry, guys. Like this one here. You can see where it's been uh, shaved. These were, as, these were almost as deep as this one here, this top one. Before I shaved it. This one was so much below I couldn't do much more than that. I've already done. 
like I said, I'm trying to level out what I pulled up when I pulled these frets. And I did use a perfect set of the pullers to do this job with a new set. It's just that these do come up. They have to be treated. They have to go back down where they belong. You gotta take a nice little file like I'm doing and just work your way. And there's little tiny chips in this, obviously. You can see those that uh, take place when you pull frets. They just chip. Especially with a 50 year old fretboard. But it's not gonna hurt the playing of this old guitar of mine at all. Now, a newer one, uh, or one that's, uh, you know, very valuable, I'd be saving this uh, shavings I'm doing on this fretboard to uh, hold into a dustpan that I'd keep and use it as a paste. Plus, I have very old pieces of uh, fretboards that have been broken up that I grind up to uh, repair little nicks and chips in a fretboard. Of course, each fretboard is different. Working with, uh, say, a uh, ebony one, it's hard to do to keep it from chipping. Just that's just the nature of the darn thing. All right. Well, here you go. Here's how it's been properly set up. And like I said, I smooth these down to just the very top of the the uh, playing area of the fret. It's kind of hard sometimes on these really older guitars because of the the. the uh, notches that uh, get you know played into them but this one I've already had a, a, a scrape down on it so it's not easier than it would have been but those dark areas that's the uh, areas that uh, used to be a big hole in them there you go I don't want to put those right back in the same place I want to skip those one over so I catch new wood now here it is here's one of the new uh, frets and what I've got to do is uh, line this thing up on the uh, guitar just, you know, carefully and give a nice little wrap on it with my, uh, with my hammer, my dead blow hammer. You can see there's not, but it, they almost seat themselves where I've got it opened up, but not quite where they can actually go all the way in. I still need to use the press. And I've cut this one to fit and what I'll do is go back through and cut them all to fit right there okay can you see that yeah you can see that now I'll take the press to press it all the way in uh, actually I'll take that back out again I want just a little bit overlapping so I can go back and uh, work that fret uh, put a uh, uh, slight There we go. So both of them are slightly in. All right, so I get a slight edge on this so I can uh, bevel that edge uh, when I'm finished. But uh, once I do that, what I do uh, afterwards, I get uh, my glue into a bottle, or it's actually the ball itself, and I dip this blade in here. It's just long, flat blade. I dip the blade in it, and I wick that glue into the uh, uh, fret lines themselves and into the tame positions. Uh, just so it soaks it up. Now, some people will pour the glue in using like a spigot or, or a, uh, uh, a pipette like one of these. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that's just too much. And what happens is the glue gets all over the fretboard as it's being pushed out. And it's better to do it my way with the wicking uh, rather than try to uh, 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 guess how much you got put in there. The wicking is going to get just enough because you don't need a ton of glue to hold these. It's just not necessary. But the wicking uh, basically uh, will do the job. I know it because I've done this many times before. And then I'll take my press. It's up out of the way. This call on here. Get this set up properly. It's not set up properly still. But I'll get this press on here and move the guitar around and uh, bring it back and bring the, the, the press, oh sorry, I'll bring the press down on it to press it in firmly and hold it. 
but the gluing comes afterwards all right and uh, most of those are not going to fit in as, as readily as this uh, one did because that's an old old uh, refret job on the first six of these frets and they've been opened up before now again like I said I'm going to leave the tiniest amount on each edge so that I can go back through these and uh, put a bevel on them and I'll just score the line the line gently on these uh, each fret and clip them when well, I can see the line <laughs> and I'll clip them so that they'll be uh, preset to uh, to use and I'll set these up one after the other there's the line right there's where I'm going to cut that at and it puts just enough of a mark on there so I can still see it and cut it and I want to be right on that with my nippers my clipper nippers my zipper clipper nippers alright so there you go that's going to be uh, number two fret. Now keep these in line so I don't put in the wrong fret because they get longer obviously as they go. And I don't pre bang them in because they'll be in the way and falling all over the freaking place. Right? So the best thing to do is just find something like my little uh, neck holder and put these all in a row like this sort of. Let me back this thing up a bit. There's number two, and just go down the row and pick them up as you use them. <coughs> so, next one, get that measured out. What I need to do is put these files away here soon. This one's number three. Like I said, I'm going to just leave a little bit of play on this on each end. So I have some to work with to put a bevel on these. And it's never a smart idea to cut these uh, exactly and try to make them fit exactly because then uh, you make them into a problem trying to uh, uh, put a bevel on them. That makes sense. But you do want to cut these straight down and straight across and not at any angle. So that's number three. Put that number three spot see this because I have gotten in a hurry banged in the wrong uh, fret and the wrong hole uh, being in a rush doing a rush job on this this type of work a few years back and I've learned my lesson the hard way because once you bang them in uh, they're not fun trying to get back out again so that's one two three is number four two three four like I said again leave just a little bit on the outside on that side a little bit on this side and score it just like that so you can see where you were and clip it accordingly just straight down and you're done there's number four and once I do these, you'll see they get longer and longer and longer. It's like any other frets. Now, a lot of people uh, I've seen do this. Uh, they'll actually try to clip the fret to fit the board and just press it in and be finished. Well, it's not going to work. Uh, you're going to end up with a very sharp fret. And you've got to uh, be smart about this and just go ahead and... Uh, uh, figure you're going to, have to do some filing when it's all over with that's all there's to it it's on the fifth fret I gotta get this call out of the way there we go one two three four five one two three four five we're on this one we'll measure it and I'm just leaving just the hair's breadth on the other side maybe uh, 16th or something like that maybe a little more so I have something to work with when it's time to bevel these up of course the beveling takes place way after the glue is set on this so 
there will be some time spent or time lapse there's number five number eleven Anyway, the mark I'm putting on these makes no difference because I'm going to be shaving it off anyway with another tool I've got. And I replaced it as well for this job on his tailor. I wanted to make sure that this baby of his is taken well care of. And that's what I did. I went and bought a new file. Right? Because the cost of this file itself it turns out it's the same as the buying the whole thing or close to it. It's only like five dollars difference. So I bought a new beveling file uh, and not use the old one. The old one is just beat up. It's just old. <laughs> and I just didn't want to take the risk of his baby having any damage done to it. And the problem with the press is that when you get to this point, you can no longer use the press. You'll have to go strictly to the hammer. But, you know, hitting him with hammers is the way I used to do it. So it's nothing new. <laughs> It's definitely the old way, and I definitely had problems with that in the past. With the uh, the wire as it was back then, it was not as good as it is to today. The uh, little triangles cut into the tang uh, were always sloppy. You know, you had to go back and take a pair of pliers and flatten some that were just poking out because their machine had not done it right. You know, hadn't properly. Uh, punched them through the tang. You had some that had gone all the way through and part of the little uh, triangle teeth, I guess you can call these, were missing. They had been uh, uh, cut completely out. <laughs> and this is on wire. Uh, they didn't supply the nicety of uh, these pieces like this. You know, it was just one long six foot piece of wire that you could screw with. I had a pre uh, radius to it and believe me it was a pain in the ass trying to work with a six foot piece of wire and not bend it out of your way saying damn it you know and now we're at that number 14 again <laughs> get it the 14th floor <laughs> like I said we're putting just a little bit extra on these both sides so that I have something to work with to uh, bevel. But like it's, you know, it's true if I've seen people actually go through and uh, cut these exactly two sides. I mean exactly. It's like, what are you doing? And the damnest thing is we'll take a little tiny hand uh, uh, file and try to uh, uh, make the corrections on it with that. You know, a little rounding file, which I've got those obviously. But uh, that big hand tool I just showed you does a great job of this. Uh, you know, beveling. That's what it's meant to do. It takes off that uh, tang edge completely. If you're, you know, careful, you won't do anything to the, you won't do anything to the finish of these guitars. But if you're new to it, what you can always do, and I'll show you, the, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can, always, you can always tape between these uh, um, tangs, you know, with a piece of tape over like this, if you're afraid of catching the uh, um, binding on the side of the guitar, you know, with that, that, with that file. All right, we're at what, 15? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Number 15 is next, guys. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, all right? And this is about as long as they get. <laughs> well, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah. And I'm trying to work this because the, the radius changes just a little bit on this guitar. At this point. And some of the uh, excess come out of that. 
Man, that hole. But yeah, I need to show you what I did last night off camera, and I'll do it again today. Uh, not as aggressively today, but I'm gonna show you what I did off camera. There's 15, and uh, let's see how I did that, because that's something you do need to know how to do. Uh, this is number 16, so that's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Alright. Where am I now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, so I'm at number 16. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm getting close, I'm getting close. Like I said, they're almost the exact same measurements now. Not much difference, and the really work on the beveling takes place once you get to the body. All right? And that's when your little files and your expertise with the files comes in handy. And I'll show you that as well. You know, of course, you don't like it. It's boring to you guys. Just, you know, hit the fast forward button. You know, because I've got people screaming, show us everything, show us everything. And uh, trust me, when I'm editing, it's great because I don't have to edit as much. You know, the stuff that's repetitive and boring to me, you know, it's like, I don't want to watch that. Of course, I do these things all day, and yeah, it doesn't get boring to see it over again, but I keep forgetting some people never seen this done before. All right. So we're at 17. All right, we're at, uh, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Right there. And what I've done while I was off camera, I didn't open up these some of these enough really to do the job I wanted to do. I was in a hurry last night. It was already eight o'clock, and I was tired. And I still had a bunch of editing to do on that video I'm putting up today. That's for the new Traveler guitar. And I wanted to shout out to him, say, "Hey, your your video's coming out, <laughs> showing that really cool traveling guitar." You guys got to see this. This is a really excellent little guitar he's made. All right, there's number 17. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Number 18's next. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, only two more to go. And on these ones up here high on the neck, I will be using uh, less fret. I'm not going to give it as much play as I am on the ones on the lower frets. That's because the filing is a little bit more harder to do up there. And I've never used a uh, block to actually file that high up on these. I always went to the hand files. I was too afraid of, you know, marring something up. Have it out the inside. And one thing you don't want to do, guys, is cut these to where you don't have any of the bottom tang showing at the underneath the uh, fret itself, because that's just common. You know, if you look at your guitar, some people will actually clip that tang and of course, while I'm gabbing away, the camera's going beep, 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 I'm about out of juice, idiot. <laughs> so we're back again. I've only finished one extra fret before I even realized the damn camera was dead. And I've only got one left to do. Let me get this out of the way. Very carefully, I don't want to have those spill out everywhere. 
And when I use that call, that neck support, I'll be moving those somewhere else so I can keep track of the numbers they are. But first things first, get these marked and cut. And open these up a little bit more. They are just way too much closed. And I don't want to be splitting any wood. But then again, I don't want these so open <laughs> that the fret just falls out in the future. You know, that, that glue will hold them in place you know, for a long, long time. But you have to remember these fretboards are not static. They expand and they contract over the you know year as uh, temperatures change. And most people you know, don't own a four or five thousand dollar or even more expensive uh, acoustic guitar. <clears throat> so they're not, uh, uh, you know, they don't have a four hundred dollar humidifier in there taking complete control over everything over the you know expansion rates and uh, moisture contents of their guitars. Now, should they? <laughs> well, if you know, if I owned a four or five thousand dollar concert level guitar, yeah, I would. I'd have a very nice humidifier that controlled every aspect of that guitar's uh, uh, surroundings, its habitat. <laughs> You'd feed it and put it to bed at night. But if you think about it, one of the best known guitars in the world is a total fucked up Martin uh, Spanisher that uh, you know who that Willie plays. <laughs> Back then, it was about 300 bucks. Now it's worth millions, of course, because who owns it, not for what it is, but it's a beat up old Martin Spanish guitar. So here we go. We are in the groove here, making sure I can get some power to this. And uh, what I'm gonna do next, guys, I'm gonna go through here and show you what I do. I have this really long blade, flat blade, uh, exacto knife. And what I do, this is which is the best for it to show you this on. This one right here. Let me show you what I do on this one fret, all right? Let's go down away from the body some. Let's go to the 12th fret. All right. I'll take it, this long ass blade, and I'll pressure down just a little bit and pull it towards the right side of that fret hole. And I'll go back, starting at the very end, and do the very same thing on the left side to open that up just a slightest bit, just means slightest bit, to help accept these frets. And a lot of these uh, that I've done, I've not done enough. So what I've got to do is go back there and you know visualize these and fix what I messed up last night. Like I said, I've got just a little bit of down pressure, but a lot more side force on these like this, right, to do the job. And my battery's going to go down again, darn it. I'm not having any luck, guys, with this camera lately. Anyway, I'll go through and do all this, and I'll set this up later on. Uh, set it all up, show you some pressing going on. So hang in there, guys.